Put simply, web page layouts used to be a pain in the arse. Once upon a time they were done with tables, yikes, or floated divs which could be problematic. This all changed with the fairly recent introduction of Flexbox into CSS. In my mind, Flexbox is the best way to do web layouts, and in this multi-part series, I'm going to show you how to use it. We're going to be building this. It's not pretty since I'm not a designer, but it will teach you Flexbox. It's a simple two-column layout, and it's also responsive. So if you right-click and choose Inspect Element to bring up the Developer Console in Chrome, then choose this phone-looking thing here. This brings up the device toolbar, so we can try all different screen widths without resizing the entire window. It's really handy. So we'll take it to 601 pixels then make it a little bit smaller and you'll see the design now switches to single column. So let's implement this in Flexbox. The web page is very simple. There are just two files, index.html and index.css. In the HTML file we have the doc type which is set to HTML. In the head we import index.css for our styles. Make sure you include this viewport meta tag. This is very important as the responsiveness of the site won't work without it. We then have down here a container for the content. And within that, we have two columns. We have col left for the paragraph text. And there's an H1 in there as well. And all the text is just loads of lorem ipsum text. We then have a right column, col right, and this is for the side panels, with each one of those being a div. Now, let's take a look at the CSS. I've started off with some simple styles. I've just removed the margin from the body and set a font. I've also removed all of the top spacing from any H1s. For the main container, I have set a background color. I've also added some padding to it, but I've been sure to make the box sizing border box so that the padding is not in addition to the size of the width. Um, we'll make the width 100% and give it a max width of 1000 pixels. So for the side panels, you can see I've done col right greater than div, so all divs that are immediate children of col right. I've set a background color for them, set some margin to separate them, and given them some height. As we can see, col left takes up the whole width, and so col right appears underneath, also taking up the full width. Let's give both of these columns some width. I'll make the left one 65%, and the right one 30%, so we can leave a gap between them of 5%. As you can see, the width has taken effect for both columns, yet the left still appears below the right, or rather the right still appears below the left, sorry. So why is this? This is because by default, divs are what we call block level elements. Block level elements are clearing elements. This simply means that the browser wouldn't normally render anything next to them horizontally. So despite there being space for the right column to fit next to the left one, the browser forces it below. Flexbox can help us with this. So if you'll remember, this container is the parent of both of our columns. To activate Flexbox Layout, we turn the container of the children we want to lay out into a Flexbox. To do that in this case, we add a display property to the container with the value Flex. Container is now a Flexbox. As you can see, this results in both columns now appearing in the same horizontal plane. This is the default that Flexbox gives us. All block level children will be columns. However, there is no spacing between them. So where's our 5% gap gone? It's to the right of the right-hand column, but we want it between them. Luckily, Flexbox allows us to control the distribution of space within our layout. This default Flexbox is known as a row-based layout because the box is a row of columns. 
we control the distribution of free space along the horizontal plane in a row-based layout using the justify content property. So I add justify content and set its value to space hyphen between. As you can see, we now get our 5% between the columns. So that col left is all the way to the left, col right is all the way to the right. What space between does is tell the browser, take all of the free space in the flex box in the horizontal plane, not taken up by the child elements and distribute it evenly in between them. So in the case of our children, they combined take up just 95% of the width of their container. So the browser takes the remaining 5% of space and puts it between our two columns. If we had three columns, each of 30% width, what would happen? So you'd get column 1, then a 5% gap, then column 2, then another 5% gap, and then column 3. This is because the free space obviously would be 10%, which would then get spread evenly between the spaces between each column. At the moment, the design isn't really responsive. We've used a percentage rather than fixed width layout, which is the first stage of responsiveness. It means that things shrink as I change the size of the display. What we never get happening though is the right column going under the left one. Since we run out of space at around 600 pixels, I think at this point we need to make the right column full width to maintain readability. We can achieve this with a media query. So this is the media query we will use. Media queries allow us to include CSS conditionally based on the width and height of the browser and the display type. So screen just means this applies only to screen displays as opposed to say print layouts. So we've got max width set to 600 pixels and that says only apply the CSS within the brackets when the width of the browser or device is 600 pixels or less. So if I had a device with a 700 pixel screen and the browser taking the full width, the CSS will be ignored. If, however, the device width is 375 pixels, as it would be on, say, a mobile phone, this CSS will be applied. Within this media query, we're going to add selectors for both columns, giving them a width of 100% each. So what this means is if we are at 600 pixels or less, these widths will override the previous widths given. So we try this out at 600 pixels and things haven't turned out as we hoped. Each column seems to be taking up just 50% of the width. So what's going on here? Now this is happening because the container is a flex box and as such by default will try and lay its contents out as a row of columns. Since the columns are too big to be a row as their combined width would be 200% of the container, Flexbox does the best it can to make them fit by making them each 50% width. To change this, we need to change from a row-based layout to a column-based layout. To do that, we add a style rule for container within the media query block, and we set flex direction to column to override the default, which is row. Also, we want to add some margin under the right column for spacing for when they're stacked vertically. So when the changes take effect, we can see at 600 pixels, we get the results we want. If we go bigger to around 700, we get the original layout back. So you can see when we hit 600 pixels, with flex direction set to column, the flex box is a column with each child as a row in that column, so stacked one above the other. I hope that this was useful, but there's so much more that Flexbox can do. So join me next time when I show you how to use Flexbox to change the amount of space items without a set width take up within a container. Now, that sounds really boring, but there's certain layouts you won't be able to achieve without knowing this.
I'm putting out new videos weekly, so make sure you subscribe. I'd also love it if you liked the video too. Any questions or comments, please add them to the comments below and I will respond. Make sure also that you get on my mailing list so you don't miss out on regular JavaScript tips delivered direct to your inbox. And there's a link for that in the description below.